Is this you? Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the Move Better channel. I am Dr. Joe. This is the professor, John Penasarada, and we are here to talk to you today about shoulder issues with overhead range of motion. Now we're sitting in a chair all day long. A lot of, a lot of us are in technology, sitting behind a computer. They're rounding out their shoulders. They're sitting too far forward and looking more and more like Charlie Brown in a position where they're rounding the shoulders out. And then all of a sudden they're trying to become weekend warriors where they're working out and they're exercising and they're put doing all these overhead presses and shoulder exercises. And that's where the pain starts to come in right at the posterior part of that shoulder. That's what we're gonna fix today. That's, those are the exercises that we're gonna get you guys through. A lot of the times when people work on overhead range of motion, they might have some restrictions and they might not be getting overhead properly and they might have like a, a, a pain right on the anterior side of their shoulder or in the front part of the shoulder. Well, a lot of the times that could just be that we need to mobilize the posterior capsule of the shoulder. So quick things that you guys can start to work on is get, grab a ball and in our case, we have a softball right here. So when you grab that ball, there's the back of the shoulder. You're gonna feel the shoulder, uh, the shoulder, the ball and socket of the shoulder itself. You're gonna place it right on that back side of the shoulder, just enough and secure enough so that the ball doesn't come out. Then you're gonna go ahead and roll your body into it now, a lot of people just kind of just roll up and down and they try to scrub it. In his case, we're gonna go through that range of motion. So internal and external right there, push it, push it, push it, push it, and then back. So that way you don't have to use your body weight to run up and down. And you, can you guys see that right there? And digging in and taking that body through the range of motion. If you would like to, you can hold, you can bring this hand across on the ground and you're gonna roll your body forward and back onto that posterior capsule to try to just give it the influence that it needs to wake up. You don't have to sit there for too long, maybe 30 seconds, maybe a minute, that's all you're gonna need just to put that pressure in. After you're done with that, we're gonna go right into the stretches to try to lengthen that posterior capsule and to get a little bit more feedback into that shoulder, into the, into the back part of that shoulder. So now we're gonna try to lengthen, a, just for a short period of time, that posterior capsule. A lot of the time we, we wanna try to pull it across like this, but if, it's, if you, like that, like that click right there, mm -hmm. a lot of the time people might start to feel a little bit of an impingement in the front part of their shoulder as they bring their arm across into one of these sleeper stretches and down. So first thing we're gonna try to do is we're just gonna pull the arm across and you're gonna grab that hand here, and you're just gonna pull that elbow and sit into that posterior stretch right there. Now remember, the, the, the goal is not to stretch, not necessarily feel a stretch back here. Your goal is to try to aim for this part of the muscle or this part of the capsule is deeper than the muscle. So we wanna get a little bit closer, and you're gonna pull that, pull that elbow all the way in as he's driving that shoulder, and you're gonna feel that stretch on the back side of that shoulder. Now sometimes, I mean, for me, for example, I can pull into that and I can't feel that stretch. The goal is to, to stretch it for about 15 to 30 seconds and then go into more range of motion exercises. So posterior capsule, we're gonna stretch that out. If we can't get it to enough with that, we're gonna start trying to get into the sleeper stretch, which I'm gonna show you guys right now. So I just put a, um, I just had his head lay down on a foam roller. You're gonna lean back slightly here. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna do a sleeper stretch. And the sleeper stretch is at this point right here because we're trying to work internal rotation of that arm. He's gonna have some restrictions there. And most, most of the time that restriction is what's limiting us from bringing our hands over our head. So we have to have a nice balance of the shoulder joint in order for us to reach full potential of that shoulder. So he's gonna grab his arm. He's gonna just grab his wrist as he's gonna keep his elbow here. And he's just gonna try to slowly pull his hand down. Now, he's gonna hold that for about five seconds. Let's just do five, four, three, two, one. Keep your hand there. You're gonna let your hand go. And as he's letting his hand go, he's gonna try to muscle his way down to gain a little bit more range of motion. Now, just remember, if you're starting to feel a little pinch right there, you do not push through pain. You've gotta get some range of motion you're not trying to push through pain because you're gonna create more and more 
problems later on. So if you do feel a stretch or a problem here with that, with that sleeper stretch in the front part of the shoulder, it's like impinging, we've got to do something a little different. Okay, so 15 or about five seconds where you're holding down and then another five seconds where you're pushing, you're gonna take it through its range of motion. You're gonna bring it right back down. You're gonna hold, push, five, four, three, two, one. Let that go, and he's gonna push it down even further. And just already starting from here, uh, just from the moment that we started, he's already getting a little bit more and more range of motion in that internal side to help him with his strength later on. Okay, so moving into the next exercise, go ahead and here's the last one that I want you to try. You're gonna roll into it, so you're gonna keep your arm across your body, straighten arm down, and all you're gonna do is get into more of a laying prone or face down position, and you're leaning. Let's do, let's do the other arms so that the way they can see it. Switch, uh, switch arms. And as we're here, pull your arm across over here. So as he's in this position, he's just laying his arm across his body, and he's just turning his body into it, and that feels pretty, pretty deep, right? So now he's getting even more of a stretch on there. Again, all I'm trying to get him to do, about 10 seconds, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. He's gonna roll backwards here, get, let, lay off of it, and then he's gonna go right back into it again. And he's gonna about to do another 10 seconds. We're gonna do three sets of that. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then we're gonna go back. And then last one, we're gonna go into it again. Now, as I said before, the rolling, the using the lacrosse ball, using the softball, whatever you wanna use to influence that posterior capsule, none of this should take more than three minutes. You should get right into it, influence the capsule, and go right into the exercise because really what we need to do is we need to create the mobility. So that's not flexibility, control around a joint is what we need to do. Cool. The next part is we're gonna to learn to activate that posterior capsule. In activation, we're gonna utilize a resistant band. Make sure that the resistant band is higher than your head. And you're gonna be utilizing this functional band. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna reach your hand up, under, and that's gonna be nice and tight against your, uh, around your wrist here, okay? And then from here, you're just gonna go into almost stretching it out first. So remember with the posterior capsule, or with any capsule, they, they work along the stress lines. So they get activated when there's stress being put on them. And so what we wanna do is they don't necessarily contract, they pull, they wanna, they wanna hold that ball and socket in place. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and hinge from here. And so remember, they're not necessarily muscle, but the muscles are gonna be activating also here. And as he's leaning backwards here, don't put too much pressure into that, don't lean too far back, just let that, that, that joint almost pull apart here. Now, a lot of people just kind of sit in that position here, but this is what we're gonna do because the ball and socket or that, that capsule around that ball and socket, it's, it's wrapped around everything. So we wanna to try to influence as much as we can by rotating the wrist underneath him. And notice how the shoulder kind of comes down here. And then we're gonna pull that back around and we're gonna open his hand up towards you guys there. And we're just gonna rotate the shoulder as it's being pulled, again, very lightly. Naturally, that's, that capsule will do what it needs to do to kind of hold it in place and then pull back in one more time. And another thing that he could do, again, this is not the only way that the capsule gets pulled. He needs to sit up straight. He needs to stand up a little bit more. He needs to change his angle. Sit up, sit up, sit up right there. So as he's changing his angle, now he's changing the positioning of that capsule and how that capsule holds in place and he could start pulling away, okay? Then he's gonna stand all the way up, all the way up here. And then again, all he's trying to do is get a few range of motion movements in there, internal and external range of motion. Now, here's the thing. After we've done that, we wanna activate the muscles that are around that. So all he's gonna do is he's gonna pull his, his, uh, his scapula back, his shoulder blade back as he's pulling. And as he pulls back, he's just trying to still relax his shoulder because the scapula is pulling away while that GH joint or the, 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 the joint of the shoulder itself is pulling. So it's almost separating apart. And that's kind of what we want to do is especially when we're trying to influence that posterior capsule right there. So again, he could pull his shoulder blade back, keep his hand being pulled away. And he, now he can rotate in and out and he's not necessarily activating those lats. He's trying to just get this, the, the capsule to move. There you go. 
Perfect. There it is. So what I want to do is get the get that kettlebell and I can hold my elbow here. Now my my scap is is comfortable against the ground and I'm trying to just let the kettlebell do what it needs to do and just open up that posterior capsule as I go through its range of motion. Now when I rotate the elbow in and out, I'm trying to turn my palm up into the air and I'm pushing straight back. I'll feel a stretch on the back part of my uh, on the back part of that capsule and I'm just going through range of motion as I'm keeping my elbow nice and stable and letting my shoulder do the work rather than rather than my elbow and my wrist. Now notice my wrist is nice and strong when I'm doing that. I'm not going to be in this position where I'm putting too much pr uh, pain and pressure into my wrist. I'm just letting the kettlebell do what it needs to do as I mobilize that posterior capsule. Cool. And then eventually I can go into even rotating it around and I can rotate my back. My back is against the camera, but you could see how straight the arm is and I'm letting my shoulder blade kind of pinch into my back here as I'm still doing. Now this is going to be more of an advanced exercise for later on, but if you feel like you can hold this up, you should be pretty comfortable doing overhead presses and overhead activities. So that way we won't have so much pain in that posterior capsule. So that's going to be the posterior shoulder mobilization, the, the, or the, the back part, the capsule and the capsule, again, just giving you guys a quick update of what that is. You have somewhat of a, of a golf ball on a tee on a, on a golf tee. That's the, that's the similarities of a, of a shoulder of a ball and socket of the shoulder itself. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to get everything around that ball and socket to be able to move, to be able to be nice and controlled and mobile. So that way you have proper, again, what we call centration, uh, equality of movement in that shoulder capsule as you do overhead exercises. If you guys like what we're doing over here, make sure you guys like and subscribe to our channel. If you guys have any questions or comments, be sure to message us, be sure to let us know. We're gonna be here for you guys to help you guys out. We're here to help you guys move better and feel better. Thanks guys, till next time.